Our human instincts to protect ourselves from pain kick in when we're born, and somehow we naturally learn how to avoid dangers. Animals also have this to a degree, but they can also kill themselves in a variety of unique circumstances. From sacrificial termites to the I'm all in mentality of honeybees, here are 20 animals that can kill themselves. Number 20. Snakes. It might seem like a funny sight seeing a snake eating its tail. Oh, look at that snake! It has mistaken itself for another animal! What a goober! As funny as the sight may be, it's actually the genuine process of a snake eating itself that may end in its death. When a snake gets to the point of swallowing its tail and forming a circle, it's already under a great deal of stress. Snakes aren't able to regulate their body temperatures since they are cold-blooded and rely on a lamp or the sun to warm themselves up. If they get too warm, they can't sweat like we do to cool themselves down. They have to find a cold spot somewhere. Confusion and disorientation can set in if they get too hot. Their metabolism even speeds up, which means they feel hungry when they're not and must eat the first thing they see. Snakes in captivity aren't able to actively hunt, which means the first thing they can see is, generally, themselves. Yeah, another scenario where a snake might try to eat itself is when it's shedding and, as they have poor eyesight, mistake their tail for a snack. If you have a pet snake that tries to eat itself, you can spray cool water on it and turn off the heat lamps. This may be enough to make them let go of their tail, but you may also require veterinary assistance. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Whales. There have been several mass whale deaths in recent years, such as when 337 were found dead in Patagonia, southern Chile in 2015, and about 300 that died on a beach in New Zealand. It seems like it's more common to find hundreds of dead whales on a beach than it is a single one. Then, after two dead whales washed ashore in Cox's Bazaar, a city in Bangladesh, researchers started to wonder if whales chose to die. The male whale appeared to have been hit by a large ship, and fish researchers deduced that the female whale may have decided to take her own life out of grief. Like us, whales are intelligent and like to be mated to a partner. They don't leave each other, and when one is injured, the other stays with them. This may mean that they, too, have to die. Surprisingly, the concept of whale suicide isn't a new one. It was mentioned about 2,000 years ago from Aristotle's time. Scientists think that whales send a signal to the sea when they're stuck on the shore. To save their friends and partners, other whales follow the signal and end up stuck themselves. This may be why half of all whale deaths involve beaches. Number 18. Lemmings there have been lots of rumors swirling about lemmings for a long time. Naturalists during the 17th century thought when large numbers of them suddenly appeared, they must have been spontaneously created in the sky and rained down. Some people believed that if lemmings got angry, they would explode. Both of these are just myths, and there's a third theory that's also not true. And that one involves the idea that lemmings purposefully kill themselves. People used to think, and still think, that lemmings will commit mass suicide by jumping off cliffs. Driven by the knowledge that their population numbers are out of control, they self-regulate for the benefit of the ecosystem. The 1958 Disney film called White Wilderness led to this still being a popular belief. It showed dramatic footage of lemmings falling to their death. But that is simply not true. Yes, lemmings do die, but it's generally not on purpose. Lemming populations boom every three or four years, and this means that some areas become overpopulated. Knowing that resources will be hard to come by, large lemming groups will take off and search for a new place to call home. Sometimes this involves having to cross a river or a lake. Sometimes lemmings drown on their journey, but it's never intentional. Number 17. Turtles. Most turtles don't intentionally try to kill themselves. Instead, thousands of them are being tangled up in nets and ocean trash we're responsible for and dying that way. However, there is a way that turtles can die on their own, and that's by flipping onto their backs. 
When turtle breeding season rolls around, male turtles can fight other male turtles to win the hearts of their future lady love. Sometimes this involves a stronger turtle flipping a weaker one onto its back. They can also fall onto their backs while mating. Being on their backs doesn't hurt them immediately, but it can if they're not able to flip themselves up the right way. Turtles that remain on their backs aren't able to get food and water. While they might last several days or even weeks without food, they can only really go a day without water in a warm, dry environment. Flipping onto their backs is something they can also do in captivity. Some people find that once their turtles have had a taste of freedom outside of their enclosure, they continuously try to get back to that environment and often find themselves flipped upside down. Fortunately, they are generally found before it becomes a danger for their health. Number 16. Termites when termites age, they somehow know that they are no longer as helpful as they used to be. Unable to gather food and perform other tasks, they become protectors even though it means they may die protecting their colony. Researchers discovered that the oldest termites in a colony have these strange suicide packs or chemicals on their backs that they use to fight off intruders. The older the termite, the larger these packs of chemicals are. They are identifiable by blue spots and house copper-containing proteins that are secreted by glands located on top of their salivary glands. Curious about what these little sacks did, researchers picked up these termites with forceps and found that they nearly immediately burst with a sticky, toxic fluid being released along with bits of their organs and intestines. When an old termite with blue spots was attacked, it would rupture its body wall and release the contents of the pouch. Just a drop could paralyze or even kill any invading termites. But the termite that released it would also die. This sort of behavior has already been seen in termites before the study, but not to the same extent. Rather than releasing toxins, termites expelled parts of their intestines, which would slow down enemies but not kill them. Number 15. Sheep. Sheep are not generally animals that will kill themselves. They happily frolic in fields, eat, sleep, and repeat. But around 800 sheep in Australia had completely different behavior after eating a weed known as darling pea. This weed grew in abundance after bushfires, and it was sometimes near impossible to stop the sheep from eating it. When they did, the sheep would begin to act like they were drunk. They would also drag their feet and lose weight. Some became depressed and bashed their heads on posts until they were left with fractured skulls that caused them to die. According to one sheep farmer, it was like dealing with a thousand heroin addicts. The sheep could recover from their condition if they were separated from the weed, but some were so far gone it was more humane to just put them to sleep. As it turns out, they also didn't need a weed to end their lives. In 2005, Turkish shepherds reported watching hundreds of sheep fall over a cliff. One sheep went over the edge of the cliff, falling about 50 feet or 15 meters, and the rest followed. By the end of it, over 400 sheep had walked over the cliff, causing the loss of about 42,000 pounds, or nearly $56,000. Number 14. Argali Sheep Many animals have evolved in the wild to keep themselves alive for as long as possible. For example, camels adapted to life in the desert by storing fatty tissue in their humps that helps them stay cool. But some animals still have a way to go, and our golly sheep are proof of that. These sheep are the world's largest and live in mountain environments. While they are hunted for their meat, the rams are also prized for their large, spiral horns that nearly complete a full circle. They use these horns to compete against other males, so at least they have a purpose. But the older the ram is, the longer the horns are, and the more they pose a risk to their life. They can start growing in a complete circle and pierce the jaw of the sheep. If humans don't intervene in some way, the horn will keep growing until it becomes a fatal wound or the ram dies of an infection. The worst part is, it's a slow process. The horns will slowly push against the face until eventually they penetrate the skin. Unless a hunter or animal rescue team takes action, the Argali sheep will just slowly die. At this point, their horns ultimately become useless for protection against other rams as well. Number 13. Babarusa. Babarusas are pigs from Asia that grow up to about 220 pounds and stand at up to 3 feet tall. They are also known as deer pigs and have curved tusks on the upper halves of their snouts that kind of look like the antlers of a deer. They are omnivores and thrive on a diet of carrion, plants, berries, fruit, and insects. 
Scientists don't actually know what their tusks are for, but they're one of the first features you see. There are two tusks on the lower half of their snouts and two on the upper half. Surprisingly, even though they're called tusks and look like tusks, they're actually canine teeth. The upper canine teeth break through the skin and curve upwards, growing towards the eyes of the Bubarusa. Unfortunately, the tusks don't know when to stop growing. They can grow so long that they penetrate the pig's skull, leading to its death. Out of hundreds of Babarusa skulls that scientists investigated, over a dozen of them had teeth that had eroded the nasal bones. Nearly two dozen had teeth that had eroded the frontal bones, and two had skulls with eroded parietal bones. This research concluded that at least 12% of adult male Babarusas would experience cranial bony tissue erosion due to their tooth growth. Number 12. Donkey! We've used donkeys as workhorses for many, many years, and they were an integral part of our world wars. Since then, we've used them for carrying heavy loads. But has anyone ever asked a donkey if this is the life they want to live? If we found a way to communicate with them, we'd probably find that the answer is no. Instead of living a miserable existence, some donkeys are choosing to take their own lives. This very topic is the subject of a zoological and evolutionary debate after experts were called in to solve the problem of suicidal donkeys during peacekeeping missions in war-torn Sudan. The overworked and often underfed donkeys would sometimes get to the point where they just refuse to pull the heavily loaded carts, and I can't really blame them. Indian veterinary hospitals are trying to figure out how to help donkeys that are so depressed and tired of their situation with sometimes cruel masters that they've taken to jumping into the Nile. They would rather die than keep working. A report filed by the Indian Army stated that an overworked donkey preferred to die by his master's hand rather than pull a cart through the market. Another, carrying a heavy load of water, jumped into the Nile River, taking its heavy load with it. It ran towards it, plunged in, and moved towards the strong current. Indian Army veterinary officers are telling owners to be nicer to their animals and drive away their suicidal tendencies with rest and good grain. Number 11. Sloth when there's an abundance of food and you're able to get your fill, you may be wondering how you can starve to death. Surely it's not possible to starve on a full stomach. It seems impossible, but not if you're a sloth. During cold temperatures, rescue centers see a lot of starving, helpless sloths on the brink of death. They're still eating and have plenty of food, but they aren't able to digest the food they're eating and extract the nutrients from it. Sloths use their symbiotic gut bacteria and microbes to break down the cellulose in the leaves, but cold temperatures cause these microbes and bacteria to die. When that happens, the sloths can still eat the same amount, but they aren't getting any nutrients and can subsequently die. The only way to save them is by taking them into rescue centers and giving them probiotics to replenish their gut bacteria. Cold temperatures aren't something sloths encounter all too often since they live in neotropical rainforests and enjoy stable weather in the warm and humid range year-round. This works in their favor since they can't regulate their body temperatures like most mammals do. However, that has been changing in recent years. Temperatures in their natural environments have been plummeting, and since they've evolved over millions of years in this previously stable environment, these drastic temperature changes are having a significant impact on sloths and other animals. Number 10. Honey Bee when a honeybee is away from its hive and believes you're a threat to it while it's out, it'll most likely sting you. They will also likely sting you if you accidentally step on one or handle it roughly. But they likely have to weigh up the risks and really believe you're a genuine threat to their hive or them, because once they sting you, they're dead. Their stinger consists of two barbed lancets. Once they penetrate your skin with their stinger, the honeybees aren't able to pull it out. Instead, they end up pulling out part of their digestive tract nerves and muscles. This causes a significant abdominal rupture, which causes them to die. When the stinger is in your skin, toxins from a small venom sac still leak into your wound long after the bee is gone, which is why it's a good idea to remove the sting quickly. You might think it's silly for honeybees to protect themselves and their hive by stinging when they're gonna end up dead anyway, but it actually makes complete sense. Worker bees that are away from the hive foraging don't reproduce. They protect their genes and the honeybee population by protecting the hive that contains the bees that do reproduce. Number 9. 
Chicken. Chickens don't really kill themselves, but they ultimately know when their time has come. They stop eating and acting as they usually would, and this can even be when you've ruled out things like worms, parasites, and mites. So the chickens just die of no apparent cause, leading people to call it sudden chicken death. A chicken can seem perfectly happy and healthy before simply dying of no apparent cause. Sometimes chicken owners rule out the most common causes like disease, being egg-bound, getting mites, Merrick's disease, and being killed by predators. They are then left with very few other options. The chicken may have experienced heart failure or heart attack, but there are sometimes signs to show that might be a possibility. A trampled chicken can also quickly die without apparent injuries, but people have lost chickens that largely kept to themselves. Chickens suddenly dying is pretty common in the commercial chicken industry, with some causes being a lack of exercise, too much light, or a diet that's too high in glucose. It seems that with so many different ways to die, most chicken owners don't really know what causes them to die. Number 8. Fish If you've ever come home to find one of your beloved pet fish lying dead on your carpet, you're not alone. Plenty of fish owners have experienced this very thing and wondered how on earth it happens. It really does make you ponder if fish are trying to end their own lives. There are many reasons why fish all of a sudden decide to leap out of their tanks to sudden death. And it doesn't necessarily mean they want to die. Poor water conditions is one of the most common reasons why fish like betta, for example, leap out of their tanks. They need fresh water, and if they don't believe the water in your tank is fresh, they can leap out of the tank in search of somewhere that does have fresh water, which of course they won't find inside your home. They may also leap out if they feel cramped or overcrowded, with the average betta fish requiring at least five gallons or even more. If you put them in a tank with a competing creature, they will do their best to escape the situation. Two male bettas can't be together, but they do like company. Snails, shrimp, and small, peaceful fish are suitable companions. Some fish accidentally leap out of their tanks while hunting, and others leap out of fear, such as if you use a scoop or aquarium vacuum near them. Number 7. Deer There have been many instances where deer have ended up dying in situations that they may have been able to avoid, but the fear of being somewhere unfamiliar to them may lead to them making fear-based decisions that lead to their death. Many deer have lost their lives on busy highways after venturing out of their natural environment and being surrounded by concrete with large metal boxes on wheels speeding past them. Many don't know they're supposed to cross the road, so they end up falling down the sides of roads and breaking bones and ultimately killing themselves. Oh, dude. He's dead, man. He broke his leg. Some are also hit by cars, while others end up getting caught in man-made structures and either dying or needing to be put out of their misery. However, we are not always to blame for their deaths. One man posted on a hunting forum that at least 80 mule deer migrating out of the mountains fell down iced up cliffs. People had to go to the scene and put them out of their misery. This same area saw several deer deaths each year, but no matter how much people fought to have fences put up, the Forest Service dragged their feet and the deer just kept on dying. Number 6. Reindeer Thousands of reindeer are killed by cars and trains every year, which is leaving Santa with a dwindling workforce for when Rudolph and his buddies retire. They run in front of vehicles and are not very visible at night, which gives train operators and car drivers very little time to react. They may also be unlikely to move when facing a set of headlights because the blinding light confuses them. So authorities in Finland decided to try something inventive to see if they could bring those accident rates down. They painted reflective paint on the reindeer's antlers, which made them look mythical in the dead of night when illuminated by vehicle headlights. The Finnish Reindeer Herders Association also tried other methods in Finnish Lapland, such as reflectors around their necks and movable traffic signs. You might think that having antlers shining at night and giant reflective necklaces would help you avoid reindeer on the road, but it didn't have the desired effect. Associated Press reports stated that these measures failed to reduce road deaths, but there appear to be some reduction in accident numbers with the use of a reindeer tracking and warning app. Number 5. Dolphin 
Dolphins are highly intelligent animals that we don't give enough credit to. They are self-aware and know when they are unhappy, so it almost seems like they make drastic choices for themselves when they are sad. Flipper was a TV show that ran from 1964 to 1967 and used five bottlenose dolphins named Kathy, Susie, Patty, Scotty, and Squirt to play the role of Flipper. These dolphins were all captured from the wild and were forced into captivity when the show ended. Kathy handled this poorly. Her trainer, Rick O'Berry, said Kathy ended up living in a small tank and experienced depression. He said a year after she finished being used for the TV show, Rick was holding Kathy in his arms at the Miami Seaquarium when she started holding her breath. She continued doing this until she died. When he let her go, she sank to the bottom of the tank. The tank, <laughs> the tank is a bad thing. Rick said that a dolphin's breath is a conscious effort so they can end their lives whenever they want to. And that's what Kathy decided to do. This was a pivotal moment for Rick. He said he knew she was tired of being miserable and was suffering, so he became an activist advocating against dolphins being kept in captivity. He also said he was ashamed of his own ignorance during the 1960s. Number 4. Ostrich there really isn't much scientific evidence to suggest that ostriches try to harm themselves or end their own lives, but the latest research does indicate that ostriches can feel inferior to other ostriches and also experience negative feelings. So seeing that other birds can fly and they can't, they may feel a little depressed about that. An article published in 1899 also described an ostrich suicide attempt at Lincoln Park Zoo. <laughs> Apparently, a rogue ostrich was being chased by Lincoln Park employees and clearly did not want to be captured. It then jumped from the park bridge, known as Lincoln Bridge, which may have been the bird trying to end its life. And that's exactly what zoo employees thought was the case when they explained what had led up to that moment. The ostrich's mate had died on their way to the zoo, and the ostrich had shown signs of depression ever since. The bridge where the ostrich had jumped off is a high bridge that spans a lagoon into calm waters. In a spooky turn of events, this same bridge has been the site of over a dozen suicide attempts since it was created, leading to it being called Suicide Bridge. Fortunately, the ostrich survived the jump and recovered from its injuries. Its fate after that point was unknown. Number 3. Bear the things humans are capable of doing to animals is truly quite awful. Just when you think we couldn't be any worse as a species, we come up with a way to exploit animals that makes them so unhappy that they deliberately try and end their own lives. Bears being kept in small cages in China so that their bile can be harvested are purposefully refusing food so that they can die. There are thought to be at least 12,000 bears kept in captivity in China just so their bile can be removed from their gallbladder for Chinese medicine. What's even more frustrating about this horrific practice is that there's a perfectly good synthetic alternative for this bile. Still, bile farm workers keep bears in cages with enough room for them to lie down but not sit up and have the bile removed through a tube inserted into their stomachs twice daily. At least 7,000 kilograms or about 15,500 pounds of bile is produced each year, which is put into medicinal products, shampoo, wine, and other products. Many bears that have been rescued from these situations have head injuries from hitting their heads against their cages repeatedly. Number 2. Alpine Cows in 2009, police in the Swiss village of Lauterbrunnen were very confused when they kept finding alpine cows and bulls dead hundreds of feet down a cliff near the small village in the Alps. In just three days, over two dozen cows and bulls were found on the rocks, and mountain rescue services had to be called in to remove the bodies so they didn't contaminate the groundwater supplies. A police spokesperson said no large carnivores were living in the Alps anymore to take care of the carcasses, which meant humans had to step in. After several trips to remove the cows, they were obviously quite interested in finding out why they were seemingly jumping to their death. Some people believe that thunderstorms in the area may have spooked them, since cows can generally sense danger and know not to plunge down cliffs to their death for no reason. Many deaths have been reported in similar circumstances before, but not in the same place and not so many at once. The cows and bulls were living at high altitudes around the Alps because there was plenty of vegetation for them to graze. Most were dairy cows, and the grass and vegetation at high altitudes produced excellent milk for cheese production. Number 1. Moose 
Moose, or elk, are the largest species in the deer family. They can grow up to 6 feet 11 inches tall and weigh over a thousand pounds. They never look this big in photos, but if you were to stand next to one, you would look tiny in comparison. Moose move around to find a habitat that suits their needs with the seasons, and it has to have plenty of edible plants, protection from the elements, and cover from predators. To find such an environment, a moose might find itself in a human-inhabited area that is overwhelming and unfamiliar. It then has to find its way through, which is probably a terrifying experience. That might have been what happened to a moose that ended up at the top of a crowded car park and leaped off the top to its death. Plenty of horrified onlookers saw what happened, including Eric Linval, who videoed the entire thing, including the moment it fell and died. The moose was seen standing on a 26-foot high ledge before jumping off and landing on the snow-covered ground below the parking garage in Burlanga, Sweden. Eric said he spotted the moose looking distressed before it jumped over the high railing and fell to its death. It's not known how it got there in the first place, but it was likely trapped and confused and jumped to get to freedom. It's amazing how animals know when their time has come or when it's in their best interest to go. We aren't that different from animals in many respects, after all. Which of these animals surprised you the most? For me, it was the two different animals with tusks that just grow through their skulls. Ugh. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.